Before any of you ask, the Metal Gear Solid 4 retrospective is coming. I'm actively writing it right now. It's just going to take some time because the game takes longer to go through than a Tolstoy novel. I'm doing this video because I wish to bridge the gap between now and when that retrospective finally releases. With that out of the way, let's make some conspiracy theorists mad, shall we? If you're a hardcore fan of Metal Gear Solid like I am, at some point you might have heard of the Fukushima theory. For those of you who have not heard of this theory, it has nothing to do with story interpretation. Matt Pat isn't going to try and sell us on the idea of Big Boss and Master Miller being lovers or something. No, rather, it's a theory based around who wrote the stories in the Metal Gear Solid games. If you asked the average gamer who wrote Metal Gear Solid, they would say Hideo Kojima. That is true, but what the average gamer is unaware of is the fact that Kojima had a writing partner for the first three games in the Metal Gear Solid series. Not only that, that person was the lead writer for the Metal Gear Acid games, Metal Gear Solid Ghost Babble, and the Snake Tales from Metal Gear Solid 2. The name of that writer is Tomokazu Fukushima. Not much is known about this gentleman, but Metal Gear fans have certainly been curious. After all, if you're credited with helping to write some of the greatest stories in the history of the gaming medium, even I would like to pick the guy's brain a bit. Maybe he's done some interviews in the past, maybe I could learn about his inspirations. But unfortunately, the Metal Gear fandom have found almost nothing. In the absence of immediate, concrete information, people will speculate to try and fill in the blanks. The most famous piece of speculation that has come about is the aforementioned Fukushima theory. To summarize, there's a contingent of Metal Gear fans that really love the first three games in the series but were disappointed with Metal Gear Solid 4 and 5, mainly because they felt the stories in those games weren't as well written. Some of these fans attribute this drop in quality to Fukushima not being involved in the writing of Metal Gear Solid 4 and 5. It's an attractive theory, especially to those who think Kojima is an egomaniac. One thing you'll notice if you're a hardcore Metal Gear fan is that there is a sizable amount of people who like to find reasons to hate Kojima. I don't really know why this is. The best the reason I could surmise was that they don't like how some fans worship Kojima like a god and will ignore the things that Kojima does wrong in order to protect their image of him. Naturally, if there's an opportunity to bring Kojima down a peg, the Fukushima theory is a decent place to start. Maybe the drop in quality is due to Fukushima's absence and Kojima wrongly absorbed all the praise. But is the Fukushima theory true? Well, to repeat what I just said, there's very little known about Fukushima. However, what little is known seems to go against the Fukushima theory. I came across a Tumblr blog featuring two pieces of rare Metal Gear content. One of the pieces was an interview of Fukushima from a 2002 book called Metal Gear Solid 2 The Making, published by Sony Magazines. In one segment, the interviewer asked how the work was divided between him and Kojima. Fukushima responded with the following, quote, While there were some parts that were edited by the both of us, but if I'll be bold to say it, all the real-time cutscenes were written primarily by Mr. Kojima, as well as all the mandatory codec calls. I was assigned to writing all the optional codec. As for which of the codec calls Fukushima worked on, he pointed to the proverbs which Otacon told Snake during the tanker mission, and some of the calls that fake Colonel Campbell made to Raiden when he was inside Arsenal gear. The second piece of content also comes from Sony magazines. It is a brief profile of Fukushima in a piece called World of the Metal Gear Solid, published in 1998. According to this profile, Fukushima joined the team for Metal Gear Solid 1 in July 1997. That's one year and two months from the release of the first game. According to this profile, he joined at the last minute to write the Japanese voiceover script. His contributions included the use of quote-unquote harsher terms like patricide and bravery and cowardice. 
Based on those two pieces of evidence, coming from both Kojima and Fukushima themselves, it should be safe to say that the Fukushima theory is disproven. Unfortunately, only hardcore fans like myself are actively seeking out this information. This whole situation lines up pretty well with Metal Gear Solid 2's core theme about misinformation, and how people will only listen to that which confirms their biases, rather than information that is true. It's a lot easier to believe in something like the Fukushima theory when you're an average or casual fan, or a hater, and accurate evidence is difficult to find. Though on the one hand, I think it makes sense to forgive people who have embraced this theory because of the lack of evidence disproving it, or rather, the lack of immediate evidence, I'm still frustrated at those who perpetuate it. While I can totally see why one would reasonably come to the conclusion that the Fukushima theory is true, there are plenty of other reasons to explain the dip in story quality. Even then, who's to say that there even was a dip in story quality? Now granted, I agree that there was a dip in story quality in Metal Gear Solid 4 and 5, but nonetheless, I still love the stories in those games, and plenty of other people do as well. Even if Metal Gear Solid 4 had some of the worst writing, it also had some of the best. The concept of the war economy, for example, I thought was absolute genius. I felt the despair of Solid Snake's situation in that game more than any of the other ones he was in, and aside from how Merrill's story was wrapped up, I loved pretty much how the entire saga was concluded in that game. And even though Metal Gear Solid 5's story was minuscule compared to the first four, the story we got was still better than stories we get in most games. I understand being upset that the story wasn't up to the Metal Gear Solid standard, but regardless, I found the game's commentary on the tragedies of war to be terrifyingly powerful. I also didn't mind the twist at the end of the game regarding Venom Snake and his true role in the saga. But back to the dip in story quality and explaining it in other ways. The fact that the stories in Metal Gear Solid 4 and 5 worked at all is a literary miracle. Kojima wrote himself into a corner in so many ways with those games. In regards to Metal Gear Solid 4, it was supposed to be the last game in the series. Then again, MGS2 was supposed to be the last game, but Konami kept on paying paying Kojima money, and he kept returning. When I consider all those story threads from the first three games, I'm amazed that he was able to wrap up pretty much all of them. But naturally, because he was trying to balance all of these plates at once, it was inevitable that a couple would come crashing down. As for Metal Gear Solid 5, the fact that game had a story at all is kind of crazy. That game took place smack dab in the middle of pre-established canon. Kojima had barely anywhere to go with the story. This is why, I believe, the game focused more on gameplay than any other game in the series, because Kojima was conscious of his limitations and did the best he could given the circumstances. I came to these conclusions on the quality of Metal Gear Solid 4 and 5's story purely on the basis of reason. It wasn't until recently in my life that I came across those Fukushima interviews. I wish that people who did or do believe in the Fukushima theory would consider explanations that didn't confirm their biases. After all, as I said a minute ago, that's what the whole message of Metal Gear Solid 2 was, right? That we should listen to all possible information? Anyways, maybe this video will do some good in that regard, promoting truth over misinformation and all that. Let me ask you guys this before I sign off. Did you feel that the stories in 4 and 5 were below that of the first three? If so, did you subscribe to the Fukushima theory? Or did you view the dip in quality the same way I did? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you ever see anybody trying to promote the Fukushima theory in the future, please share this video with them. Don't give the Patriots any more reason to control the world than they already have. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit that like button, that helps me out a whole lot. Also, if you want to see more Metal Gear related content, hit that subscribe button. There will be more videos on Metal Gear coming out in the next week or two. In the meantime, please consider clicking on one of the Metal Gear videos you see on screen now. Until my next video, just remember, stay yellow.